be talking to women from the motoring industry who become a driving force in what is still considered a male-dominated world. Tuning in to the connected customer, what motorists will want in the cars of the future? And I'm at the offices of Autotrader to find out how consumers are changing the way they buy cars. These days, if you want to find one of these, you'll probably start your search on one of these. Hello and welcome to Driving Change, a series of four programmes where we report on challenges and opportunities in the motor industry and the changing ways in which customers buy and care for their cars. Relationships with customers are critically important and in this programme we look at who is synchronising with their customers and reaping the benefits. There will soon be more female than male drivers in the UK, yet only 2% of people working in the motor industry are female, according to government figures. A recent IMI survey also shows that women are six times more likely to expect to be ripped off by garages. Robin Ross gets the inside story on the automotive gender gap from some of the industry's most influential women. This is the usual sight when you visit a garage, but times are changing. Lois Lane is an apprentice mechanic. Before landing the role, she sent a CV to over 30 garages. She received just one reply, but recently she passed a test with distinction. Lois doesn't need a superman to fix her brakes. Us females are just as good as males. Uh, I mean, I fitted the ba a battery the other day and the woman high-fived me at the end and said, I hope you uh, do well. And it was, it was lovely to hear that. But Lois is a rare sight. There are over half a million people working in retail in the motoring industry, but just 2% of them are female. The Institute of the Motor Industry is calling for more women to consider a job in motoring. They say businesses need to take urgent action to bring them in, since a recent survey revealed women are six times more likely to expect to be ripped off by garages. And it happened to me recently where I worked for an MOT, I was selling my car and he said, you know, an observation is this, you don't need it fixed, but you really should try and get it fixed. And then, you know, lo and behold, he gives me a price for £400, which when I spoke to my dad, he said, there's no way, there's no way you should be paying that kind of money for that kind of thing. 47% of women have a driving licence, but it's predicted they'll soon outnumber men. So women are a driving force to be reckoned with, both as customers and employees. Lucy Burnford is co-founder of an online guide to the best garages in your area. No, women definitely shouldn't be put off being in the motor industry. Just because you don't possess a technical knowledge of vehicles doesn't mean you can't bring lots to the table, whether that's marketing or customer service, and anything that you need to know from a technical point of view, you can learn as you go. Jane Russell runs two garages with her husband. They have a clutch of awards, including Independent Garage of the Year. Steve is a master technician and Jane a master businesswoman. She understands the importance women have to play in the success of her company. A lot of the women are the decision makers. They're the ones that are spending. Um, even if you're talking with the husband, he'll always want to check with the wife that he can go ahead and, you know, authorise a repair. So, you know, why would you not go straight to the woman in the first place? So this garage has been set up to be female friendly. We have a kiddie section here for children and we even have Poppy, the office dog. The industry has improved. 20 years ago, Annette Buckby desperately wanted to be a mechanic, but was firmly told no. Today, she travels the country encouraging girls to consider a career in the motoring industry. They don't know a lot. I think it's really educating them to the fact that there's not just the one job, which is a technician. You can do other things, such as a service advisor, IT, HR. The good one is the designer. Obviously, the Evoke was the interior was designed by Victoria Beckham, and that's a real puller. And then you get them talking, and they're then sort of realistically thinking, yeah, that could be an option. But there's a long road ahead. Only 6% of engineers are female, and there is still much resistance to employing women. Paul Killingsworth gave Lois her chance, and 75% of his customers are female. Paul believes garages should embrace their feminine side. It is a female industry, not just a male-dominated industry. To look at a woman and think they can't lift. Um, we've proved it, we've got a wheel lift there. It's not expensive. We all work as a team. You're either as a team or you're on your own. So you certainly can't afford to ignore women in the motoring industry or any industry really. We're 50% of the population and we make up 50% of the decision making in any normal relationship. So I think that ignoring women, ignore them at your peril. 
And there's no way you can ignore Lois, especially with her achieving top results in her exams. I would like to become a master technician um, and get to the top and just carry on with what I'm doing, really. Because you love it? Yeah, because I love it. How does the car industry stay ahead of technologies that have the potential to change the preferences of car buyers? Well, understanding consumer attitudes and behaviour is critical to planning for the future. And that's where leading global research firms like GFK are providing critical insights into the connected consumer, as Donna Bernard reports. The dream car will no longer carry the cachet it once did unless it keeps you connected with the rest of your life. GFK discovered this trend in their recent consumer life survey. Interest in cars fell 5% over six years, while interest in technology rose 17%. Consumers are increasingly looking for connectivity in their vehicles, and GFK knows they expect a seamless digital experience between the car and the home. The way GFK works is very international. We have a lot of offices all over the world in, I believe, more than 100 countries with 13,000 employees. So we like to work together, providing with the client the best output we can. We're going beyond, you know, the car being a separate entity altogether, which is traditionally how it's been. We're now actually seeing, you know, cloud accessing vehicles. You know, in the future, we could very likely see your car telling you that your fridge has told it that you've run out of milk and you need to pick up some milk on the way home. It's a growing challenge challenge for car manufacturers, they're seeing new players in the market like Apple and Google. Smart technology is going to change the way we look at our cars. It's not just a case of getting from A to B, but seeing them as an extension of our homes. Self-parking, for example, is already available in the BMW 7 Series. And with input from companies like GFK, the automotive industry can be ready to embrace all this new technology. What we're trying to do is allow people to keep their car up to date all of the time, whether that's through in better integration of their phone, email support, but then also introducing new technology that's retrofitable for people at no extra cost. As this year's international smart home study by GFK showed that 78% of consumers felt that smart home technologies would have an impact on their lives, BMW launched an integrated hub with Samsung called SmartThings, where you can connect multiple devices around the house to a BMW for the first time. You can also check that your doors are locked as you leave and also lock your doors from the car. So you can check that your house is locked and secure at any time and also see who is at home um, in the house. The research carried out by GFK shows that although consumers say safety is what matters most to them, they'll actually pay more for features that can help them manage their life or simply make it more fun. We're working with GFK to try and understand how customers are using our infotainment systems initially then uh, potentially looking at wider research with them and how we can understand the customer. The combination of car makers working with tech companies can help to attract buyers. We're seeing technology really driving uh, innovation in, in, in the car market. As consumers, we want the latest. We want what's new, what's different, uh, what's fun, what gives us bragging rights. And, and it's great because uh, you know, cars are now so loaded with the stuff that we really want. The autonomous features in the BMW 7 Series work by using sensors and cameras in and around the car that detect other vehicles and help keep a safe distance. But the driver is still required to be in the car for now. I do certainly think it's possible and feasible from a technology perspective to have fully autonomous vehicles on the road in the not too distant future where you don't have to have any driving input at all. Um, but that's really from a technolog technological perspective. We have a you know, huge social element in there and a political element and a legal element as well. And all of these things have to come together. When the climate is right for driverless cars to take to the road, there's no doubt that the companies who understand the connected consumer will capture the market.
Now, the last time you brought a car, chances are you didn't walk into a forecourt as your first port of call. Increasingly, car buyers are choosing to start their search online. Websites like Autotrader make the job easy. But as Shuli Ghosh explains, retailers and manufacturers need to adapt if they don't want to be left behind. There are over 30 billion cars on the road. Last year, new registrations were at a record high, driven by consumer confidence and cheap finance. Not only are we buying more cars, but the way we're buying them is changing. Like many people, Ronan starts his car buying journey online. He's able to call up statistics and reviews of cars he might like to buy. He can also check out the finance options available and what his current car is worth in part exchange. The ease of use and the, the convenience of online and the, the feeling of um, you know, trust and reliability that you get from you know, an objective platform is exactly what I want and that's why I use it. Autotrader is the UK's largest digital marketplace for car buyers. It estimates the average consumer spends 11 hours online choosing the vehicle that's right for them. Autotrader's audience and brand director Naomi Hahn says retailers and manufacturers have to embrace that. It's quite interesting for retailers and manufacturers because previously they were the front of all knowledge on the forecourt. Um, they can still be the front of knowledge actually, they just need to do it in a different arena. So they need to make sure that digitally, and that's across all platforms, so mobile, tablets and desktop, they're providing that consumer with the right information. With all this information at their fingertips, Consumers are likely to know exactly what make and model they want to buy, even before they've reached the showroom. And that means retailers and manufacturers have to expand from their traditional advertising and marketing strategies in order to reach more potential car buyers. Manufacturers, when they uh, are launching a new car, often they'll use TV um, as their main marketing channel. We would like to see them using the internet as a companion to that activity because using the internet they can be much more targeted in their approach and they can really connect with the right consumers at the right time in their buying journey uh, in the right medium. Okay, so if I was to press on the A3. And the digital experience can't stop online. Dealers need to adapt to new technologies to ensure customers like Ronan have a seamless transition from their online search to their offline purchase. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm really impressed. It's not really what I expected. It's not really my, really my vision of um, car dealerships. I feel like it's kind of taken the best parts of the online experience and you know, given it a personal, a human touch. Audi's head of PR, John Zamet, says some parts of the motor industry have been too slow to adapt, and that's hurting business. You don't want two standards of convenience where it's been very easy sitting in your lounge at home with your laptop and then you come into the, the dealership uh, or the retail environment and uh, it's not slick and it's not easy and it doesn't feel comfortable. In the olden days it was very easy to just have a guy with a pencil you know, and saying what colour do you want and so on. We're way beyond that now because there's so many detailed spec choices that you have to make in a car. Autotrader says 80% of car buyers find their cars online and dealers should be using data to make better decisions on how to target them. Data is all about identifying what cars they should be stocking, what price they should be stocking them at, and then identifying cars that just aren't going to shift so they can replace that stock with stuff that is going to be sold on to the local car buyer. The likes of John Lewis and Next have been doing this for years on the high street. They have huge data departments and they use tools and technology to enable them to predict what products they should have when in order to maximize profits. Car buying has never been more competitive and it's clear that internet technology has put the customer firmly in the driving seat. Attracting customers back to dealership workshops after they've left the showroom has the potential to increase profitability as well as enhancing reputation. White label insurance provider Premia Solutions has developed systems that are delivering remarkable results in helping dealerships retain customers. And as Nick Thatcher reports, stay on the right side of the regulator.
Sean and Tandy Cuffley drive a Mercedes C-Class, but within weeks of buying their car, they'd scuffed two of the wheels. Fortunately, they'd also bought Premier Solutions insurance policies from their dealer to cover them for this kind of accident. And it was a simple process to make a claim and get the damage repaired. It was just... Just yeah. very, very straightforward. You very... weren't wasting your time and you felt no, no as though they knew wasting. what they were doing and providing a very professional service. Yeah, and, and I didn't, I didn't have to repeat any information. Uh, everything just mm. happened very smoothly, yeah. very professionally. Premier Solutions offers white label insurance products that provide a range of benefits for anyone looking to buy a car. Their client list includes eight of the top 20 dealer groups in the AM100, one of which is Lookers, and they run this flagship Mercedes-Benz showroom in Gatwick. Of course, people buy insurance for peace of mind and they hope they'll never have to make a claim. So in order to meet the high expectations of today's customers, Premier Solutions aims to make their claims experience quick, simple and painless. Significant investment in technology has helped make that experience as seamless as possible. From point of claim and assessment to instructing the repairer, who's often the dealer the policy was bought from. This is Jamie from Mercedes Gatwick, just calling to arrange your other wheel refurbishment. And all with the aim of completing repairs as efficiently as possible. Today's customers really take the quality of repair as a given and what they're actually really focused on is that quality of experience of making the claim. So we can really improve and enhance that experience by making it very easy for us to communicate with the customers but also make it really easy for the dealer to communicate with the customer to get that repair facilitated. That's really important for the customer's journey and the customer's experience of the claim. Well, this particular dealership has been around for two years. It's quite new, relatively new. David Curran is a divisional sales director for Lookers Mercedes-Benz here in the southeast, And he told me that insurance products from Premier Solutions also act as a powerful tool for the dealership to build customer loyalty. If customers come to us with a claim, the most important thing is how quickly it's dealt with. Premier offer a great um, process that allow us to sort that out for the customer almost immediately. And of course, happy customers mean returning customers. Correct. One thing that uh, is very important is that Premier share our values and Lookers values are customers for life, which means that we are heavily focused on customer retention and Premier are a great partner in doing that with us. And then what we can then do is look at um, what is actually coming back into the site. So, you know, how many customers are actually coming back in to have the repairs carried out. But customer loyalty is only half the story. Premier Solutions can also support a dealership to develop its finance and insurance business with comprehensive management information available at the click of a mouse with their online dashboard. We support businesses like this to drive their F&I programme through training, systems and processes and ensuring they have the appropriate products for their customers as well. However, we can't do that unless we have the correct management support from the dealership. In addition to that, we see compliance as a great opportunity and not an obstacle uh, to develop the skill set of the sales team, ensuring that they deliver the products to allow the customer to make an informed choice. Customer retention and loyalty is crucial to any car dealership and having bespoke insurance services like these can not only extend a brand but also give an opportunity to grow business, increase income and offer better service. Next on Driving Change... Team spirit, how being a part of the community is fueling business success. Customers for life, the aim of a warranty scheme endorsed by a racing legend. And telematics that can help improve vehicle and driver performance. Now, being the biggest is the aim for many businesses, but for one of the country's most successful motor retailers, the aim has only ever been to just be the best. JCT 600's annual turnover may be more than a billion pounds, but their focus has always been on their people and the wider community. Now, this report begins not in a dealership, but with the Tadcaster Albion under 13s.
professional football training for a youth team, or thanks to the company that sponsors them both. JCT 600 began with a small petrol station 70 years ago. After diversifying into selling cars, the business now has more than £1 billion in turnover. The company says it's important the community also shares in its success, and this team are reaping the benefits. What do you think of the fact that JCT 600 sponsors you? Uh, well, it's good because they give us kits and like opportunities like this, because they sponsor professional football teams and us. And it gives us privileges that other teams don't have. So your, your yeah. family like the company as well? Because my mum and dad have both got cars off JC600 and then my auntie and uncle have as well. Is that because they sponsor you? Probably. <laughs> JCT600 employees can recommend charitable ventures and this team has been sponsored since it was under sevens. Their coach, Andy Bateman, who is head of operations, is delighted his company agreed to invest in the team his son plays in. Usually it's, it's some sort of family connection or something they do outside of work that's important to them that they volunteer in. Um, and really, if it's important to one of our colleagues, then it's important to the company. You do feel proud of, of the brand and what it does uh, and that it's more than just somewhere to come and work. As well as professional clubs like Bradford City, JCT 600 sponsors more than 40 local sports clubs like Tadcaster Albion under 13s. The aim is to give something back to the community. It's an ethos that underpins the business and is why many employees say they chose to work for them. When Kirsty wanted to start a family, she didn't want to choose between her home life and her career. She says JCT 600, as well as supporting her to get her professional accountancy qualifications, then continued her development even after she decided to work part-time. It's allowed me to give my best at work um, and also give my best at home as a mum. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, but it's also allowed me to continue my development with the company. And it's just been win-win all round. JCT 600's name is another symbol of its success taken from a personalised car registration plate for the founder Jack Tordoff, in it he won the Circuit of Ireland rally in 1973. Four generations of the family are now involved in the company. The current chief executive says their values, which are exemplified by the slogan, trusted by the world's best manufacturers, are the business's most important asset. As an industry, we're really good at taking, people, uh, taking money off people. Um, and I think one thing that we could all learn from is actually putting something back into the community. So we, that's one of the principal reasons why we work hard at doing so. We support people in the community by getting involved in, in all sorts of projects. It's not just sporting initiatives. And it's something that we're really proud of. Along with the philanthropic nature of the business, supporting a range of charitable events from breast cancer to a donkey sanctuary, the company was also instrumental in helping support the campaign to bring the Tour de France to Yorkshire. It was such a success, the Tour de Yorkshire is now an annual event. And its roots are very entwined here. And I think people now, there is a flight back to not just quality, but authenticity as well and genuine values. And this organisation, JCT 600, represents just that. All this has contributed to JCT 600 making the Sunday Times best 100 companies to work for list. As these children are among those sharing in its success, they may wish to continue it in the future as customers or perhaps even employees. Strong and trusting relationships are the key to success on the racetrack and, of course, in the showroom. Well, that's been the view of Britain's greatest racing legend, Sir Sterling Moss. Sir Sterling is brand ambassador for Safe and Sound, the flagship warranty scheme from the WMS Group that's helping dealerships retain their customers for life, as Julie MacDonald reports. Almost seven and a half million used cars are bought by car-hungry Brits every year in the UK. It's a major life event for most people, and when things go wrong, it can be devastating. Fortunately, I wasn't in the car with my children, I was on my own. So the engine caught fire, so I had to pull it. It was horrible, it was a really scary... I've never been on the hard shoulder on a motorway before, it was horrible. I'd bought it from a little local dodgy dealer. It was just in warranty. He was so reluctant to help me fix it. He really didn't want to. He had to, but he made it, it was very uncomfortable. 
I've had quite a few bad experiences buying cars from private sales and privately once bought a car, but um, it broke within, it, dro it broke on the way home, on the way home. Fed up with poor after-sales care, couple Gemma Jewell and Tim Matthews decided that when it came to buying their new used car, they'd opt this time for a dealer with a powerful safe and sound warranty, which offers a thorough safety inspection, background check, electrical and mechanical warranty and rescue and recovery. They've already made a claim and this time it was painless. You do drive away with that sense of reassurance that if something was to go wrong, no matter how big or small, you can pick up the phone, you can talk to a human being and they will help you sort it out. The fact that the dealers really liked the product, yes. that made a difference as well. Not only do you get the roadside assistance for six months, uh, six months full mechanical and electrical warranty, which I think is very unusual as well. The safe and sound warranty was created by Eric Stone. With 30 years in the automotive trade, he saw a gap in the market. That is the old adage that warranties are not worth the paper they're written on, and we felt that we could change that. And so we embraced the opportunity to provide a higher level of cover. It needed to be all mechanical, all electrical. It needed to have a value claims limit. It needed to, to have no real limitations and also cover wear and tear. Bolted onto the programme is a, a fairly robust training programme, which is something that the dealers have adopted. Legendary racing driver Sir Sterling Moss is the ambassador for the Safe and Sound campaign. What cars do you have in your household? Uh, I have a Twizy and my wife has an Aston Martin, that's it. Is that the right way round? Sir Sterling wants to help protect motorists and to encourage trust and professionalism in the industry itself. Well, safe and sound is, in my opinion, a tremendous idea because it means that people can buy a car and they can then... It's like having, having a car with a guarantee for life. Yeah, well, cars are very complicated now. I mean, far more complicated than when I was racing. And... Uh, I think that the more that we can do to give the, the motorists a feeling of confidence, the better off it is. And that increased customer confidence builds customer loyalty and potentially a lifetime of business for the dealer. Derek McQueen runs this car dealership in Aldershot, where his staff are trained in how to deliver the safe and sound product, which is regulated by the FCA. Good afternoon, chaps. I'm Simon from WMS. When you're selling warranties, A, the people selling them need to be confident in them. That's a big thing in our industry. Um, and that goes back in time where people had to sell warranties and what was the real level of cover, it was almost you do it because you have to do it. So our staff are very confident in the warranties they sell. It can be quite a painless experience for the customer and that just breeds retention. So too does the My Motor Manager app, which comes with this innovative warranty. The dealer can let the customer know when it's time for a service or an MOT. And Eric's hope is that safe and sound will continue to be taken up by dealers across Britain and help to change perceptions of the used car industry, benefiting customers and the dealers who want them to keep coming back. Would you change your driving style if you thought it would save you money? Well, a new telematics device from Tracker Network UK, part of the Tantalum Corporation, is giving drivers the opportunity to do just that. Carolyn Sim went to see how dealerships can use data to become connected to their customers and help improve the performance of the driver and the vehicle. are already part of the information age. Sat-nav and Bluetooth systems keep people connected while they're on the road. But telematics experts Tracker are taking that connectivity a step further. They're already one of the market leaders in tracking and locating stolen vehicles, but their next generation of products will allow drivers to connect with their cars like never before. This is the Tracker Pulse device, which plugs into the same port that car mechanics use when you break down. It unlocks all of the information available about the car, its performance, how it's being driven, and if there's something wrong. And that information is collated on an app, which you can use on your smartphone. 
The Tracker Pulse app gives drivers a rating. If they're braking hard or accelerating quickly, they'll see how much fuel was wasted. It checks the health of the vehicle. If it's involved in an accident, it gives a damage report. And if it breaks down, it tells the breakdown provider exactly where the car is. The information on the app can be shared with insurance companies to potentially reduce premiums. And for families, it could take the pressure out of car sharing. Well, it can help because the data gathered from the collection unit will, will, will tell you how they've been driving. So if they've been driving um, very aggressively um, and quickly and going around corners quickly and, and all of that stuff, all that information is going to be gathered and you're going to see a real distinct difference between those two people's driver score. Tracker's new system is already being used by fleet owners. They're now offering car dealerships the chance to sell it to individuals too. Part of our journey is to connect the car with the person. That's the first part of our journey and the Tracker Pulse enables that to happen very much. The second part of our journey is to connect the car with the person and with the home or the business. And that's the journey now that we're on. And that's where I think um, working with, with uh, manufacturers and dealerships, that second part of that journey can be um, actually realised. Because although the benefit can be presented to the consumer at one end, it can be presented to the manufacturer or the dealership at the other end. This is going to allow them to talk to their customers in a completely different way and with the accuracy of the data it's going to really um, reduce the amount of service leakage that that dealership experiences because they're going to know when vehicles are due for service, they're going to know when there's engine warning lights and there's problems um, and they're going to know the cost of that repair so that they can phone the customer up and give them that information. Tracker believe the future potential for their products is huge and that they will fit in well with the growing demand for Wi-Fi enabled connected cars. I think in future we're going to see we talked about driverless cars, you know, connected cars. We're going to have driving trains on the motorway. And I think this is all to the good because it's going to make driving safer. And of course, if you have connected cars, you also have cars that uh, are performing more efficiently. For dealers, Tracker Pulse is about building long-term relationships with customers. For individuals, it's about taking control of in-car data, further proving that the value of information is limitless. Well, that's all in this programme, but be sure to watch the three other programmes on business opportunities, powering the future and innovation. All four driving change programmes can be viewed on the IMI website. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.